Hello, and welcome to Keep Hope Alive podcast. We have a wonderful show for you today. I got the lovely Isa Mary Blanco here, and she is a Sean Mantic. I hope I said that right, and forgiveness therapic, therapist, and she is going to walk the talk with us today. I love that saying, walk the talk. So welcome to Keep Hope Alive podcast. <laughs> so Thank you, um, thank you, thank you. So welcome. Um, before we get started diving into who you are and what you do and everything, I have a random question for you really quick. <laughs> so out of the past 15 years, how many weddings have you been to? Uh, one. One. Okay. Only gotcha. Okay. One. Okay. Yeah. So usually during a wedding, your guest who are coming in, whether it's a ceremony at a church or even outdoors, they will come in and they have to sign this one thing saying they were there. What is it that they have to sign? The guest book? Yeah, yes, definitely. I had one guy say their life away and I was like, uh, <laughs> that's a good answer. <laughs> the guest joke. <laughs> the couple does. Oh, God. <laughs> so, but one of our biggest sponsors here, I'm sorry, guys, I got to drink coffee as I go. I just got back from the hospital. But anyway, um, so one of our biggest sponsors is Life on Record. And what they do, instead of having the guest book, they do a vintage rotary phone. So your guests are coming in. They get to pick up the phone and leave a message for the couple. So it's like, congratulations. We're so happy for you. Or maybe you got a groomsman and he's like, dude, it's about time you put the ring on her finger. So all these messages get collected and then they will burn these messages either on a 12 inch vinyl record or they have a keepsake speaker they can put it on. And it's so adorable. I call it the little boom box. Um, so, and it's all personalized. I love that about this company. So, and it's always the gift of voice. <laughs> so you get this phone number for one year, which is really good. Now, you don't get the phone for a year, but you get that number for a year. You got to send the phone back. And then, um, so I always tell people who are using this for weddings, if you call or send a quick email to your guest, be like maybe two months prior to the one year anniversary, I'm sure they can call back and say happy anniversary and everything. And then they burn those messages too. So just think, you know, you're celebrating your one year anniversary. You can sit back and listen to everybody talking while you're eating that top layer of cake. <laughs> so, but definitely um, plans only start at $99. And to find out more information about them, please visit www.lifeonrecord.com. All right. So my biggest question is, who is Isa Mary? I love your name, by the way. Oh, Isa Mary. <laughs> thank you. I love my name too. It's a, it's a, it's a very meaningful name. Uh, it's like all names are very meaningful, but I love mine because it's a combination of Mary for Mother Mary and also yes. Isa. There was a name that was also given to Jeshua, Jesus. So it's also called on some parts Isa. So Isa Mary for me is like that union from the two of, of those beautiful energies. So yes. yeah. Yes, that is beautiful. I love it. I love it so much. So yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about growing up. Is this something you knew you wanted to do in life and you just worked your way up or tell us the story how you got started? <laughs> yeah. So as you said in the beginning, I'm a shaman and also a forgiveness therapist. So did I knew always that I was going to end up doing this? No, I didn't. Yeah. Uh, do I know now that all my previous experiences were preparing me for doing what I do? Absolutely, yes. I know that for a fact today. Um, how it started? Well, my life, it's just been, yeah, like I grew up in Latin America. I'm between Mexico and Venezuela. And that would really brought me into contact with, uh, with plants and also in contact with nature and contact with the jungle and I have a deep, deep love for nature since I'm a little, little kid. So being able to work with her as her as Mother Earth or 
Pachamama, Magaya, whatever name you want to give her. Pachamama, and, that's new. Yeah. I never heard that. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, it's, a, it's a privilege and it's something that I really am very grateful to being able to work in, in this in these realms and to really bring, as I said, so it started since I was a really small kid, a relationship with working with the medicine of the plants and, and really doing small things and like, I don't know, from small things for coughing or syrups or doing things for, for the hair or just mixing plants to really create a day have medicine. So to, that's how it really started without me even knowing my relationship with plant medicine. And then later on, just all into that lay on into the shamanism and the part of the energetics. And that brought me to forgiveness. And it's all, it, it really was like a, a complete journey. It's a full circle that started when yeah. it was really small, I think, in my first trip to the Amazon. And it was around eight. Oh, yeah. Okay. So that's where the jungle comes in. <laughs> so I was like the jungle. I've always wanted to go and visit and especially watching that movie Anaconda. But my background, I'm a photographer. So I would love to bring my camera there and get some really great shots. It's <laughs> so beautiful, beautiful. I bet. Yeah. So I love doing nature shots, landscapes, whatever. I remember I was in Virginia and we were headed to the airport and I just said to my uncle, stop the car. Like I was a young girl, but I had one of those small Kodak, you know, cameras back in the day, but I got this great shot of a barn by a pond and it was beautiful blue sky and the reflection of the barn in the water. And I, I turned it in, um, to a photo contest and they were like, you literally won, but you forgot a couple lines in the trees. I was like lines in the trees way back there. I don't draw lines in the tree. This is like the real photo. Aww. So did you get good pictures out there? Or like, were you a young girl when you went to the jungle or? Yeah, I was the first time I was around eight. Uh, and I do have pictures of me when I was oh. that old in the jungle. <laughs> Actually, I received one of the, I, when I'm, I'm, do ceremonies now and and like since many years ago I started working fully on shamanism I do ceremonies and I still wear one of the like I've received a necklace from an Indi from an indigenous person back in the jungle and the Amazon when I was that age and I still use it when I'm in ceremony it's just a yeah beautiful beautiful oh, thing beautiful yeah. that is so yeah. beautiful yeah I love it that just touched my heart and soul I've done so many weddings in my life but that just sounds good and I noticed as a young girl and it was just New Jersey but like going outside I felt very in tune with nature too I mean from little things like smelling the dew in the grass I was like is this normal as a kid but I loved when it snowed. I love the fall. There was something about touching the leaves. My dad was raking up. It wasn't like an average kid just running and jumping in it. It was just, I took it in spirit, heart and soul. Like this, yeah, of course it was fun, but like, hey, this is beautiful because God made this and, you know, he's given these seasons and you know, I, it's like we are human and we're going through phases in our life, but you know what? So are trees. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and actually nature is a beautiful reminder for us as the nature of seasons and that everything goes changed, that nothing is remains the same, that always is changing. And we, we see that with nature. And I, I said trees for, like you just said, are incredible teachers because they show us the beauty and the surrendering of letting go in in, in nice. autumn yeah they let go yep. of the leaf and yeah. Satya, if you're if you're you're aware it's just if you're open if you open your awareness you can learn so much from from nature because the lessons are there it's just for you to tune in and, and see it um yeah so, yeah, yeah. It, that's a good way of putting it you gotta tune in and see it. I mean, I talk to a lot of people about relationships too, but you've got to tune into yourself and know who you are before you fall in love and give somebody your heart. You've got to be in love with yourself and know your worth. But <laughs> so yeah, you just made me like think of that because that's a true segment. Like 
I have some friends that go through hard times. Maybe it's trying to date or find somebody in this world. But I think the key is always know who you are and be in love with you yeah. first. And then your heart opens up and you don't have any kind of like energy that's going to be so down low because other people can pick up on that stuff. So yeah. going back to the tree, the tree is like, hey, we're just going to shed our leaves and let it go. And, you know, they have no problem doing that. And we're going to come back and bloom and spring and show the world what we got. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And again, is the beauty of, of embracing the changes, letting go of control. Like that's a, a thing that humans as like, we like to think that we have control and that we like to think that we can control everything. Um, yes. And isn't that surrendering and really to accepting the process and the nature of things that there are always changing. Everything is constantly changing and we are too. And, and we, so yeah, it's meant to be static and to still um, that's something that you really learn also when we, when, when you in shamanism, because we see time in a different way, it's not linear. It's that we really see the fluctuations and the movement. And then, and it's like really embrace that fluidity of, of time. Uh, so it's, it's, it's beautiful to be able to see that, that those two and, and embrace yeah. and incorporate all of that together. Yeah. And like you said, you were working with the plants and everything. And I truly believe the medicine is just right under really our nose is the ground. It's what God produces here. So, I mean, I'm tired. Hey, I am tired of going to the hospital. <laughs> so here, let's try this medicine and let's try this medicine. And then you find a medicine that works. And then it's like, well, we're going to charge you like $90 just to get this. And then you're like, well, why? You know, my question is you open two new bottles at the hospital. You tried it on me. It worked. Why can't I go home with the bottles? Hmm. <laughs> but rules are rules. And, you know, Sadly, some people can't just afford a medicine that's going to help at that kind of price, you know, so then you're stuck again. But I mean, it could be something as simple of finding the right things. Now, I know as a kid, I always thought I was going to make the next thing that killed bugs. And I wanted to play with my perfumes. <laughs> like kills fire ants. I don't like the fire ants. I wanted to have this new spray created. And I think as a young girl, that's when I started to realize like these are things or mosquitoes biting. I hated those. So, but back in the day, I saw a reel on this, you know, there was no video games and so we were always outside, you know, and this reel was really funny if watching it today, but it talks about our parents didn't want us home back in the day. So we had, to, we were drinking from the hose, which that reel is correct because I remember getting water from the hose. We were playing sports outside. We're doing all this fun things. I remember playing barefoot. If I stepped in fire ants, I stepped in fire ants. I'm not going to cry over it. Yes, it itches and burns, but I moved on because that was just a part of nature. But, you know, in the reel, I said, you know, even... <laughs> The news was aware of what parents were doing with their kids and letting them play at night. So the 10 o'clock news comes on and they go, parents, do you know where your kids are? <laughs> it's 10 o'clock. <laughs> so I was like, if the news has to remind the parents, that just tells you how the world was back in the day. But I'm glad to have nature as a background. So, yeah. you know. You really get to explore it. So, you know, um, you also talked about being a forgiveness therapist, and that's beautiful to me. So I want to learn more about that, what you actually do. Yeah, of course. So I I am the leader of a movement that is to shift the narrative around forgiveness from a place of difficulty or victimhood. I don't even like to use the word victimhood, but from that energy, from that place into yeah. at place of empowerment because forgiveness is actually a catalyst forgiveness is something once you work through forgiveness right and that's the work that i do on one-on-one -on -one or on group seminar containers that i also have is to really show you to really show people how to use forgiveness and how forgiveness can be a catalyst something that actually propels you and moves you forward in your life 
And forgiveness is not something that it's just about other people. People sometimes when when you talk about forgiveness, people look first, the, the normal instance is to look into the outside, like that person, that situation, that, that, and it's also, it's a two, it's also bringing back to yourself. It has to do with accountability, with, with really ownership of, of things. And the part of ownership, it's really to honoring everything, honoring all of your journey and not only accepting it, but wearing it and be and own it in a way of like it, you're proud of of everything because that everything makes you who you are today so yes. forgiveness is not is not about forget like forgive and forget i don't believe in that it's not about forgiving and erasing forgetting or erasing what happened it's about embracing what happened it's about integrating what happened and actually raised from that place and that's what we do with forgiveness therapists it's really allowed and really empower individuals to to find what i call the gift inside the struggle or to hit gold that's another term that i like to use when i was with my clients is to really find that that space for you and making space for you to that in that journey of self-discovery and self-mastery it's a journey it's not a quick fix it's a journey uh it is a a journey yeah. What if um, you had a client, and I'm just asking, that didn't get closure on something bad that happened and they just don't know how to? And that's probably was their first step before they could learn forgiveness. So how do you go about coaching something like that? Yeah, I, I, when we, again, forgiveness have so many different angles. So I can work with people that you can be either seeking closure or you want to heal for a trauma or it's just, but forgiveness really, it is about claiming your power, bringing, taking back your power. And that's one of the main things about forgiveness. You take your power back because at the time when it's, you give your power away. So you bring your power back to yourself and really about freedom because you caught all the tides that you have from the past they're holding you back and yeah. energetically i can go and that's why i work with shamanism and energetics it's all those cords and all those things are still attaching you to that person that situation that experience so it's not only mentally that you have to work with forgiveness uh it's also energetically that's why why i use shamanism to really work with the energy so you're not attached and hooked to that person you're not attached and hooked to that situation and so you can find freedom from that past you can really sever and and cut those things that are dragging you because it's really hard i give the example to people imagine you want to drive a car and you want to drive it but you have the brake and you're pushing the brake and it's like but at the same time you have the full on the, the gas it's mm-hmm. you need to release the the past in order to really move forward and that's what we do with forgiveness regardless of what it is again it could be from someone that is trying to find closure or for someone that it's trying to it is recovering for something really difficult it's like i said a trauma it's about that those two elements are really really um key i would say those are, yeah yeah mm-hmm. so when people come to you um how do you, is it in office meetings or do you also do zoom meetings yeah most of my work is online i do okay. i work with people yeah most of my work it's online um because i work with people everywhere in the world so i doesn't matter where they are located uh this is the beauty of technology today that we can i know everyone no matter where they are like we are now exactly and, yeah, yeah now i was reading talking about that really quick you're from South Africa too. Like, well, where are you based right now? <laughs> I am now in Germany. I'm based in Germany. Wow. Yeah, yeah. But I lived before in South Africa uh, for almost five years. I have I have lived in in different countries uh, so far, in the seven different countries in my life, and I have really been incredibly blessed with leaving and having that experience, but also training 
in my in my in my own journey like doing trainings and study from people different in different different countries with different yeah. lineages different areas so I'm I'm very grateful for that experience I, you are so lucky. I mean, that's one thing I wish I could do is travel a little bit more. And I bought myself a piggy bank for Christmas. It's like called my travel adventure fund. And I gather up all my loose change. I think maybe I got $6 now. <laughs> like I either want to go see like Colorado or maybe where the Grand Canyon is. And there's something tell me go to Utah with my camera and just get some beautiful pictures that I can put in frames and everything. So like I'm trying to follow my heart there and see where it's going to lead me. I always had this one thing. I just want to get in the car say 48 hours no gps no roadmaps i just want to hit the gas and go and see where i end up <laughs> oh and this and this it, there are so many beautiful places to go and discover it's just yeah yeah so i hear stories of people growing across the country to get to somewhere where they're going to live now and i'm just like i would love that you know but being able to stop in different places and stuff is just amazing so it's like i get my adventure through the podcast learning about everybody and i'm like i want to do that too my voice is in and out but um just really quick i'm gonna jump into another quick commercial is that okay with you okay so another big sponsor of keep hope alive is snap bands okay so i'm gonna show you right here i got hope and i got faith and let me tell you quickly about the story of faith now with snap bands they don't originally make faith but if you go onto the website write a note and it's the code, the promo code is K-H-A, Keep Hope Alive. And you can say, hey, I want the faith one in this color. They're going to give it to you only with that code. So remember, it's Keep Hope Alive or K-H-A. So but really quickly, I'm going to tell you a little bit about snap bands. So the world is a stressful place for everyone with work, school, relationships, health issues, finances, the nightly news. There's anxiety every day. Negative thoughts can keep popping into your head over and over again. I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy of anybody loving me. Bad things always happen to me. If you ever have these types of thoughts, you are not alone. More than 40 million Americans are diagnosed with anxiety disorder. Anxieties, worries, and fears can stop you from finding inner peace and achieving your true potential. You deserve to live your best life. Finally, there's an amazing new bracelet called Snap Bands that was invented to help you reduce anxiety, control OCD, and calm stress. Snap Bands are cognitive behavioral therapy tool based on proven brain neuroscience. And the way Snap Bands works is amazing. So Snap Bands bracelets look like a stylish piece of jewelry on your wrist, but its unique design actually hides a secret elastic band that sits right on your inner wrist which is a pressure point to your brain's nervous system. When you give the elastic a light tug, you feel a very gentle, soft vibration on your inner wrist. A gentle vibration sensation is all you need to reduce anxiety. And here's why. Did you know that the human brain can only deal with one emergency at a time? Well, whenever you feel an unwanted negative thought in your head, gently snap the elastic on your inner wrist and it forces your brain to focus on a gentle physical sensation you feel, which instantly disrupts the unwanted negative thought from your brain. This gives you the freedom to reset your mind with a positive mental focus. The mantra word on your snap bands bracelet helps you to refocus and reset. Now, there are eight. We had seven before, so I told you about how to get faith. There are seven to eight different mantra words you can choose from on your bracelet. Believe, blessing, dream, fearless, hope, love, peace, and faith with the code. <laughs> Just choose the mantra that resonates most powerfully with what you and after you snap, use your mantra word to immediately reset your positive mental focus on that mantra expression like, I believe in myself. I am a blessing. 
I am fearless. I will always have hope. <laughs> we all know the terrible stigma in America is associated with mental health. The best part of snap bands is that you can calm your anxiety at any time without drawing any attention. It's stigma free. Snap bands comes in a lot of beautiful different colors. They're so comfortable. You can wear your bracelet all day long. They are waterproof. So you can even wear your snap bands while doing dishes or taking a shower. They're made from a premium vegan leather, which is attractive and durable. Plus they're allergy free, latex free and nickel free too, which is great for everyone with sensitive skin. But what I love the most about snap bands is their mission to help everyone reduce anxiety, stigma free. They donate a portion of every sale to leading mental health organizations to snap out the stigma. Check out the amazing bracelets at snapbands.com and that is spelled S-N-A-P-P-B-A-N-D-Z. When you purchase a snap bands bracelet, you are helping make the world a better place. <laughs> so I'm going to jump back into our interview really quick. <laughs> that was a lot to say, you know. So I have to give the owner a little ha ha ha. That is not two minutes. That feels like four minutes. <laughs> I love them though. So, um, but yeah, I love my two. And you know what? I've had hope on for over a month now. And I do that. Like I'll try it at church. I will try it when I was in the hospital too. I mean, the hospital was giving me bad news and I just kept snapping like every time I needed it. And the doctors always had a different story about me. And I was like turning on peaceful music <laughs> and like, um, breathe. It's going to be okay. It's like, you need a major surgery, but it's going to be life-threatening, but then no, you're going to go home. We're not going to touch you. And it's like, which one is it? Hmm. So yeah, you just kind of had to go with the flow and I'm snapping away. <laughs> so I have to have fun and enjoy life and continue doing what I love is what I came to conclusion at the hospital. So I'm not going to let anything stop me. I'm going to be the warrior. I always am. So now you wrote some books. I want to hear about your books. Is it one, two, three books? You got all new ones coming out. <laughs> I see you glowing. <laughs> yeah. Tell us about so them. I do. I have written several books, so I have from a different uh, area. So I have one book that is about natural remedies uh, to use during pregnancy, because when you're pregnant, you cannot take any medication as we, we women that have been pregnant like myself. And I wrote it while I was pregnant from my first son, because I couldn't take anything and I have a really rough first pregnancy. So I went back to all the knowledge that I have in plants and, and, and herbal heuristic and all that. And then I really adjust and put all that into that book to how to address all the symptoms that we go through when we're pregnant, all the possible ones, because I had all of them, <laughs> and really address every single one with natural remedies. Um, obviously, that are safe for, for when you're pregnant. That's my first book. Then I have other books on forgiveness, as you know, as part of my cornerstone of my, my work. So I have written about forgiveness also two books. And I've written also a book uh, for kids. I love, uh, I think it's a beautiful thing, especially uh, well, teaching kids about boundaries and really the, the power of, of of boundaries it's like it's called Bailey and the invisible line and it's about teaching kids how to use boundaries in a way that they can understand how to honor and respect their space their body there's like all of this so those are my are the books that I have that I have written so so far yeah I have a diary like a like journey like like I have several journal I have several books that are all available on on on, on yeah online and then I'm going to add on to our store for our listeners to just click on there, find them and everything. And then, wow, that's amazing. So, I mean, it's beautiful. Forgiveness is so important in life. And, you know, a lot of people just don't know how to do it. So I'm glad to be talking to a coach that literally can help people get through this. And it's very important, especially and the times we live in right now. So people like we can hold grudges, you know, but it's not healthy. It can wear on our bodies too and make us sick. 
I yeah. always say clear up the grudge. You know, if something's bugging you to a point where it's like taking over that mental space in your head, talk it out so you can relieve that energy. So once it's gone, you're going to be able to see the world in a whole new light and move on because always the next day is a new chapter, you know, that we create. It's up to us. You know, how do we want to live, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. And also because you mentioned something, there's a few things that you mentioned that uh, when you work for forgiveness, when we let go of that anger, that raj, that resentment, uh, that all those feelings create, uh, let's just like a, like a different, like if you were wearing glasses, let's just put it that way, something yeah. that actually filter with reality. So you're actually seeing reality filter through that experience, through all that, those feelings. So what you do with, with one of the things that you do with forgiveness, when you let go of that, it's not only you're creating space for all the new possibilities and your new life and moving forward and all of these things. Also, you're re removing that filter that is showing you a distorted like image of reality because you're filtering yeah. everything through those past experiences and you're not seeing things like as it could be you're filtering your your the things through that hurt through that resentment through that anger so it's a beautiful thing to really give you a clear vision of how things can be and also giving you space to to live up to the endless possibilities that are available for you at any given moment it's just yeah. that we're limited by that past hurts. We're limited by that belief. We're limited by all that old story. There's all these limitations that are there that when we work through forgiveness, we just clear all that out. So you can truly be free to move forward. As I said before, with, without having to carry the shackles of the past and just all the things there, there it feels like a weight. It's actually weighting you, weighting you down. So it's really, it's a beautiful, beautiful tool. Uh, as I said, for to really claim, to take back your power. And when I said take back your powers, people are sometimes like, but what do you mean about power with forgiveness? And it's like, oh, they have so much to do with, with power. Because when you, and I can, I can invite you to do this exercise of also whoever is hearing, hey. when you talk about something and you get a physical reaction and you're like, mm, you start getting all work up, like mm, we're talking about oh, this person and blah, 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 blah. And you start getting all this mm, going on. That person or that situation or that experience clearly has a power of a new so strong that is affecting your physicality. It's affecting your physical state. And it's actually get making you get like, oh, I get it. Oh, you start getting red and you start your, your heart rate start changing because that's how much impact and how much power it has over you. But when you work for forgiveness, when you really do the full circle of forgiveness, it's what I do with my clients, you are free from that. So it's not that you're for, you forget what happened, like I said at the yep. beginning, you incorporate it's it's you can talk about that you can without getting that f triggered without getting that physical reaction. It's not that I I erase and oh, I'm gonna pretend that never happened because that's not really working through forgiveness. That's that, that would go with that's a different thing, but it's really being able to talk about it, be able being able to acknowledge that it happened, that it was horrible, that it was painful, whatever things might have happened, but without you having a physical reaction or emotional reaction towards it and when you're able to do that that thing doesn't have any power over you anymore you're free from yeah. it so and that's a beautiful beautiful thing because there is so so many of, of us that have had situations in life with where that has a power that it's really it's controlling the narrative controlling how you perceive reality controlling yeah how you 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 know like the example that I was giving now yeah this is when I tell people it's like no I'm over it and I'm like okay and it was when I clients and we start talking about it if I see and if it's again it's an exercise to everyone if you can talk about it without getting any physical and emotional reaction that you're fine you're absolutely stable with it then you are done but if you get these situations, if you get, there is still something there that is what I call a hook. And that's what we work through. The, the thing is to walk, to walk live without hooks. 
is to really so you can be without having all the things that are going to just the stories that are going to hook you back and are going to hook you it's it's not about that it's really about clearing all those hooks so you are yeah totally free from it I don't want to go through betrayal. Like if somebody were to get betrayed by somebody, of course, and it just happened to them, of course, they're going to have to process it. I don't want to say they're fully going to shut down, but, you know, let's use me, for example, um, because I'm always a target here. (laughs) I was like, just use me. So if you had been betrayed by somebody, I will take a break. Like, let me process this because I know if my words come out right away, they're either going to be like a coaching life coach kind of way. Like, let's analyze this. Why did you say this? And why did this happen? And how can we fix it? But that doesn't work with everybody. So then it leads you, okay, I need a break to process, you know, but then I'll come to forgiveness and learning how to do forgiveness with somebody who's hurt you really bad. So, you know, I don't want to say, you know, people are so quick to determine, oh, they hurt me, screw them. I'm going to block them on my phone. I'm going to block them on my Facebook. I'll show them, you know, and they just harness that energy that is so bad. You know, I really think if people would start listening more and learn how to communicate better, things wouldn't blow up so fast. You know, um, the young kids going to school, you hear at a distance, you know, I will always hear, oh, I can't believe she said this. She put it on Facebook and TikTok and Instagram and she ruined my life. You know, those things, we didn't have that back in the day. So it's like social media is also, and you know, for the younger generation, it's like, I'm sorry, it is 10 times worse. Nobody wants to be punished throughout social media. So it's like, if you have a conflict with somebody at school, keep it at school. Do a one-on-one phone call with them, but don't put it out there on social media saying how bad somebody is, you know? So I don't know. It's just weird. Have you run into that? (laughs) Yeah. It's it's coming back to what you were saying about betrayal. Uh, There's something that it's come, it comes up a lot because betrayal, it's not, when we talk about betrayal, the first normal the the most common thing to jump in is to be betrayal from a partner that you're in a relationship and one of the parties get betrayed by the other Uh, that's something that I work a lot with clients Uh, Mm -hmm. but it's not only that betrayal can go into different aspects you can feel betrayal from your loved ones or from from a family member from a friend from a colleague from a betrayal is a big it has a big spectrum and forgiveness has a lot to do with betrayal And and forgiveness, and again, betrayal, it's not about the other, and and it's the same with forgiveness. Forgiveness is not about the other person. Forgiveness is about you. And it starts with you. It's forgiveness is something you don't give, you don't do to others, you do for yourself. Yes. Forgiveness is really an act, also it's an act of self-love. Because yes. again, if you're not working this. I'm gonna do this because I, I, no, it's you on. It's you want to be free from it. You want to stop feeling this way. You want to move on. You want to just be free from that grief, from the anger, from the Elton betrayal. I have so many different emotions that come up when when you are betrayed. I know because I have been also betrayed. So yeah, and it's really working through that and coming back to that place that I was talking in the beginning. It's a place of power. It's a place of and not power of like I'm better off. No, it's your power, your own one, your sovereignty. You're being empowered. It's really about about that. Yeah, definitely. I, I noticed one thing, like I told you that I was in the hospital and I really practiced forgiveness yesterday, but I also had, I want to know the truth going through my brain because one doctor would tell me, like, I hate to say it, the truth. And the other one had a totally different story. And I'm like, which one is it? And then even my nurse 
she said so and so would do this and i questioned the doctor why would you do this i never did that and da, 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 da. i was like wow i feel like i'm in high school but you know i felt like a detective and i shouldn't have to be a detective while i'm in the hospital to see what the real true story is i had to investigate and it's like okay can anybody tell the truth here so i remember the last doctor i could tell he was very spiritual and I really like trusted him because he was telling me things that were truthful. And I just said, listen, you're my doctor. I don't know you, but in the real world, like let's pretend I was married to you. And you were overhearing yourself talk about me, your wife. What would you tell me to do really when I got home? He goes, go see a doctor right away. And mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, that's as truthful as you're going to get. So, you know, I've talked about this before. You know, some people gaslight. They just want you in and out. We can't solve you by. Um, but, you know, I think when you get that individual who knows, I had to learn to forgive the doctor who is like, ah, I'm giving up. I didn't understand him. So I advocated for myself. But do I forgive him? Yes, I forgave him. Like as soon as I left the hospital, they're doing their job just because I've been blown off so many times for so many years through hospitals and regular doctors and specialists. I can't hold that against somebody who has really tried and just doesn't know how honestly to do it. Um, so yeah, talk about forgiveness. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there should be yeah, a, a book. A you need to write a book yeah. about forgiveness in the medical industry. <laughs> I know. Maybe that could that could be my next book. But it's a when I talk about forgiveness, I tell people that it's a life skill. It, it truly is. is because it's yeah. something that is not only applicable to oh, and forgiveness is just to do. You can apply it to relationships. The yeah. principles, and when you really learn to work with forgiveness, you have to, and we talk about it before, you have to learn about ownership. You have to learn about accountability. So there's many things that we work through when we do the full circle of forgiveness, that when you know how to work that circle, you can apply it even to your business life. You can truly yes. apply it because then how it is important to, to know how to work with ownership in a professional yeah environment absolutely is it so it's really not only for relationships it's a life skill that can help you and, and assist you in so many different angles and so many different levels the spectrum of of this work it's so big it is it is yeah so i mean that is a great thing and like people I want to go back because you mentioned work and I don't think people really see that, but that is like from family and work, betrayal does happen at those things or a boss will make a quick decision. There is no understanding and they're just focused on whatever it may be. I think, you know, for me, yes, I have health issues, but where it came across, you know, I'll never forget one of my bosses was like, how could you do this? to me and I was like what did I do to you you know like a something happened to me I didn't ask for it but did I get let go yes was it wrong yes you know I just try to be eyes more wide open and you know as I'm going through my journey of all these health issues it feels like the past job it's like I get the health insurance and then I'm being sent to this special this 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 you have this and this and this wrong with you and it's like okay I'm gonna stop <laughs> no more work because I don't be, feel like being let go you know I was just like I'm a good photographer I'm doing good on my podcast Let's just kind of refocus, regain, you know, this is the new world we're going into. A lot of changes have happened so far going into 2024. So I'm going to go with the flow and <laughs> keep this a go. But we have to advocate and be our own warriors at times. So, but, you know, having that natural down to earth, which I have to say, and taking time out for yourself helps reset your whole body and knowing your best worth of yourself, you know, that's what it comes down to. So 
I want my listeners, if you need to reach out, like, I think you have a great thing going on right now with the forgiveness coach, because there is a lot of people that are still holding on to that. And they probably do need to talk to somebody also about it. So, but I'm hoping this podcast show will also give them some clarity that what they need to do and everything. So um, if they wanted to reach you like on your social media stuff, where can they find you at? Yeah. So you can find me on Instagram, on Facebook, and I have my website and all is the same as my name, Isa Mary Blanco. Isa Mary is, so Isa is with two S's as of son and then Mary as mother Mary. So Isa Mary Blanco as the color white in Spanish. So Isa Mary Blanco Dot com is my website, Isa Mary Blanco and Instagram and Isa Mary Blanco on Facebook too. And you can find me in all those different different places. And uh, yeah, I'm I would be more than happy to to keep guiding people in this journey of forgiveness. Is it really in this journey from difficulty to empowerment? Because as I said in the beginning, it's all about you claiming your power back. And you really step in into the endless possibilities that are available for you. Yeah, definitely. So my goodness. Well, you are wonderful to come on today and share your story. So I really appreciate you. You've Thank taught you. me a lot, you know. I loved every aspect of diving into this and finding out more about what you do and how you can help people. So um, just really quickly, I want to thank our other sponsors, too, for being on Keep Hope Alive. Um, our first one we talked about was lifeonrecord.com, your interactive guest book. So you can have that vintage rotary phone to collect all those voice messages and burned on a record or a boom box. I call it boom box still. <laughs> so you can find out more information about that. We also had snapbands.com. So it's spelled S-N-A-P-P-B-A-N-D-Z.com. So this is what a snap bands looks like. Remember the promo code if you want faith is K-H-A. And they do help reduce anxiety, OCD, some PTSD. They help with cognitive thinking. So they are wonderful. Our next one is Ogden Ventures, LLC. Mark is Ogden. He is a former NFL player, a keynote speaker, and author, and has his own podcast as well. You can find out more information about him at www. And I'm going to spell this one out too, because he spells his name a little bit different. It's M-A-R-Q-U-E-S. O G D D E N dot com. So please check him out. Our next one is bridal shows inc.com. Um, if you are getting married in the near future, they host about five to six trade shows out of the year. So you can see all these vendors showcasing their work, get information on them, set up an appointment. They also have fashion shows there too. She does a beautiful job. She's also has a podcast on the show, Naomi Butler. So look up her podcast. She is a true warrior also. Our next one is milesandsmilesevents.com. Also podcast on the show. <laughs> look that one up. So her background is investigator, but she also does handwriting analysis and lipstick readings. And she's very accurate, which is really cool. My mouth just dropped open. I was like, we were interviewing her like we really wanted to have her in our company, but she nailed the three of us and we're like hardcore people, but I've seen her work and I am just like, there's a part of me, like, even if she was at an event, I probably wouldn't do the rest of the event because I wouldn't want to watch everybody's expression. That's how good she is. So please check her out. Our next one is Bryce Harney. His website is www.brycemagic.com. So imagine that. He is a magician and a mind mentalist. he probably seen him on TV too. He does big events like corporate events and some church events, but he is amazing. I would suggest also look up his YouTube channel and search Bryce Harney. Our next one is Richmond punch.net he graduated from the julie arts he is a violinist he's been in the industry for over 30 years and does a bunch of shows 
He has performed in front of a million people before, had a couple spots on Lifetime shows and everything like that, and he is available to be hired for big events, so check him out. Our next one is TK Hair Salon. They are in Plano, Texas, so if you're in the area, stop by. If you're a man, woman, children, they do the haircuts, they do the coloring, they can do perms. They can do updos, they can do the eyebrows, the lip, everything. So check them out at www.tkhairsalon.com. Remember, if you have questions for us, you can always call us at 833-780-HOPE, which is 4673. And visit us on our website at www.keephopealivepodcast.com. And we would love to hear from you what other stories you would like to hear from our guests and everything. If you would like to be a guest speaker, please join on too. So um, we are in our 14th season. Yay! I can't believe that 10 season per season. I'm like 14 since April of last year. I was like, that is so cool. And I love sharing stories around the world. So that means a lot to me when we hear these stories, it's empowering for other people. So. But I want to thank you so much once again for coming on. <laughs> oh, thank you for having me. Thank you. Oh, thank, you're you well. thank you. You're welcome. Until our, oh, until our next show, love and light. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Aww.